on the carousel. But I'm in there practicing every day. I'm drinking the damn vegetable juice. And I'm exercising where I hate everything except the last step. And I know I am doing everything I possibly can. Which doesn't mean that tomorrow I might not have a stroke at my age. I just heard this week that, you know, I'm a World War II veteran. They are dying at over a thousand now a day, World War II veterans. And I have no uh, illusions about that. But by golly, the exercise has paid off. The vegetable juice has paid off for me. That's another thing I have such a problem with children. When I go into these uh, junior highs and into the high schools and talk to kids, and I, I think they kind of like me because I, I remember how I felt. That was the toughest time of my life, those teenage years, when I, I said the puberty glands were, I did a lot of crazy things, man, and they do. And they come to me and they say, well, what about dope? Now, that's the hardest question in the world to answer, if you're going to be honest. Now, I've never gotten into dope in any form, shape, or way. But I had parents that loved me. I had parents that took me to concerts. I had parents that really cared and gave me a home life and made me realize what a family was. I go into these high schools nowadays and the kids don't even know who their father was. And their mother is on, oh, welfare, grinding out kids so she doesn't have to work and again can watch the soap operas every day. And the kids are out on the streets, and they're coming to me and saying, what about dope? Well, the big thing that's tough for me is that some of the greatest musicians that I grew up with and admired and know were on dope. Or they were alcoholics. Uh, my favorite pianist of all time was a man by the name of Art Tatum, a black man that was mostly blind. I came in one afternoon at 5 o'clock, and Art Tatum started playing. At 7 o'clock the next morning, he was still playing after 22 beers. He would have a couple beers, he'd play quick, and then he'd run for the, the John and come back and play some more, have another beer. And after every beer, I swear he played better. People like Charlie Parker. I was at his concert in Carnegie Hall when he didn't show up for a whole hour because he was out trying to find a pusher for dope. Now, what am I going to say to these kids? I say this to them. So many of these men were beaten up as children, were thrown out, were like this. And when they took liquor or they took dope, it opened them up. But what a price they paid. So many of them died in their 30s and early 40s, horrible deaths but they were able to at least create in that time. And, I, and again, take what you want out of life, but pay for it. And if you're going to get into dope, man, you're going to pay. And I'm not here pointing a finger at you for what you do with your life, because I can't, I can't relate to you. I had a loving family. That, here I go again, but I think the only savior of our country is family life. We gotta have a family. We gotta have somebody that tells you, hey, you gotta be in at 12 o'clock. If you don't, you gotta clean up, et cetera, et cetera. And kids may rebel like crazy against that, but boy, they respect it. And to be in life, respect is way ahead of love. 
If you respect a person, then you're able to really love them. Otherwise, love is just sex and on with the next. But here again, I only speak from my own experience. So what do I know when I'm talking to you? All I say to you is you've got to sit down and decide what you have to do in life and then not gripe through all your life and expect welfare and everything else in the world cradle to grave taken care of and gripe about it all your life unless you get it. Because, again, cradle to grave <sighs> takes all the, the ambition out of you. All the people I know that have made it big have been just down ground to death. I remember when I first went to New York with a wife and baby. For three months, all we had was spaghetti. And I couldn't get a job, and I'd go into MCA every day and sit outside of the agent's office waiting for him to come home at night so I could just grab him and say, don't you have a job for me? And he'd look at me and say, no, no, kid, you know, I'm busy. But I went through that, and I went through the struggle. That's another thing. Don't get me started today about divorces. People that get divorced, I continually ask them, well, what happened? Now you're making all the money in the world. You're famous, and I see this in my business night and day. Why, why, why did you get divorced? When, when were you the happiest? And they all say the same thing. We were happiest when we were struggling. And I think as much as I hate the vegetable juice, as much as I hate the exercise, as much as I sit in a chair agonizing, trying to come up with another arrangement, I'm happiest when I'm struggling. And I fight it every minute because, as I tell people, I've always looked for the easy way and I haven't found it yet. But at least I know the hard way and I know it works for me. It works for me. But if you don't want to take the hard way and you want the easy way, take what you want but pay for it, because to me, it's going to take all the real life and creativity out of you. When you turn that on, you turn yourself off, as I said about the television. And that don't mean that I don't watch TV. It just means that it doesn't control me. And when I have to come up with arrangements, that's another thing. I do my best work on a deadline. <laughs> 